Welcome back for another video. Today's video will be about an incident involving two men by the name of Ariano Mendez and David Avina from a gang called Hard Times Fontana. Based in Fontana, California, Hard Times Fontana territory ranges from Cypress Ave and Citrus Ave and Foothill Boulevard. A female eyewitness lived on Redwood Avenue just north of Valley Boulevard in Fontana. On April 26, 2015, around 10 p.m., she heard approximately three shots. After the first or second shot, she looked out the window and she saw a guy holding a gun in both hands and firing. He was in the street near the open driver's side door of a black car. After a break in time, she approximately heard three more shots from farther south toward Valley. The witness described the shooter as Hispanic and around 30 years old. He was chubby or chunky. She testified that he was taller than the prosecutor, who was nearly six feet tall. However, she also testified and told police that he was around her height. She was five feet four, five inches tall. According to the witness, his hair was not too short. However, she then agreed that he had very, very short hair. She had told police that he was bald. Someone else called 911. A police officer was dispatched to the intersection of Valley and Redwood. When she arrived, Medical personnel was working on a man lying in the street. There were several bystanders, including a woman wearing scrubs, like a nurse. A bicycle was also lying in the street. The victim was identified as Guy Estrada. He had been shot once in the back. The bullet tore through the left lung, causing internal bleeding and eventually death. One fired bullet casing stamped to Lama 223 was found nearby. Surveillance videos from three nearby businesses all time stamped between 10.05 and 10.09 p.m. showed a black sedan going south on Redwood. It slowed or stopped on the driver's side. There were three flashes of light. It then turned right on Valley and right on Cherry, thus going in the direction of a jack-in-the-box. Ten minutes later, the same black sedan came back the same way. On April 30th, 2015, four days after the shooting, Police saw a black Lexus in the driveway of a house on Kempster Avenue in Fontana. It was similar to the car shown in the surveillance videos. A Vina was standing near it. When it left the house, about 20 minutes later, the officers followed it. It seemed to be driving evasively. The police turned on their lights and sirens. The car ran a red light and accelerated onto a freeway. As they pursued it, it went up to 90 miles an hour and was weaving in and out of traffic. After going five and a half miles, the Lexus got off the freeway and stopped at a gas station. The occupants, Avina, the driver, and Mendez, the passenger, were arrested. As of April 2015, Avina was 26 years old. He was 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighed 205 pounds. He had a shaved head. Mendez appeared to be 21 or 22. He was 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed 260 pounds. He had a full head of hair. According to the probation report, at the time, he was 18. The Lexus belonged to Avina. In it, the police found a Washington Nationals hat that also belonged to Avina. They found a 22 caliber handgun under the passenger seat and an SKS 223 caliber rifle in the trunk. The rifle was loaded with tool ammo, 223 bullets. The bullet casing found at the scene had been fired from this rifle. There were no usable fingerprints on either gun. Christopher Baca had pleaded guilty to armed robbery with gang enhancement and assault with a firearm in exchange for a sentence of 20 years. While he was awaiting sentencing, he was in the same jail as Mendez. Mendez told Baca that he was a member of a gang called Hard Times. He also mentioned the murder of a man riding a bike in Rancho Cucamongo or Fontana. Baca contacted the police and told them what Mendez had told him. He was hoping to get a deal for a short sentence. In the end, he did not get a deal of any kind. Nevertheless, he agreed to become an informant for the sake of the victim's family. The police had Baca wear a wire and placed him in the same cell as Mendez. At that time, Mendez believed that Avina was throwing him under the bus. He asked Baca to send a kite to gang higher-ups, telling Mendez his side of the story. Mendez therefore told Baca, we shot that fool on Valley. Avina was driving. His passengers were Mendez and another man named Anthony Guerrero. They were looking out for those fools. Mendez and Ant were supposed to bust that day. 
They were on the street before Cherryon Valley when they saw the victim all banged out on a bike riding past them. He was headed toward Valley. Avina said, bang on this fool. Mendez asked the victim where he was from. The victim said 187 Rancho or something like that. Mendez had the SKS, but Avina said we weren't doing it right, so the fool did it himself. Avina got out and tried to fire, but Mendez had not pulled the clip all the way in. The victim started riding for his life. Avina fixed the clip and fired several shots, but missed. Avina then said, screw that, we're going to get this fool. He got back in the car and drove after the victim. The victim was on Mendez's side, so Avina handed the gun to Mendez. But then the victim swerved his bike to the other side of the street, and Avina said, give me it, he's on my side. As they turned right on Valley toward Cherry, they pulled up alongside the victim. Avina said, hold my steering wheel. Avina then fired several shots. He hit the victim in the back and dropped him. Avina laughed an evil laugh and started seeing. Another one bites the dust. They stopped at a jack and box on Cherry. Avina decided to go back to check on the body. They saw a bunch of cars and people, including a nurse. Mendes was like, yeah. He and Avina were just laughing at that because that fool's dead right there. In sum, then Mendez's statement was consistent with the eyewitness testimony and the physical evidence, except in two arguable respects. First, while he said he and Avina were going down the first street east of Cherry, he added, I think it's, he added, I think it's Banana Street rather than Redwood. Banana was nearby on the other side of Cherry. Second, he said every single shot hit that full. However, he also said that some shots missed, both in the initial and the final interviews. Photos showed Mendez associating with hard time members and throwing hard time gang signs. Similarly, a photo showed Avina at a known gang house wearing gang attire and associating with hard time members, including one throwing a gang sign. Guy Estrada had tattoos indicating that he was a gang member, including Southern Style on his neck and Etiwanda and X3 or 13 on his chest. The shooting occurred outside Hard Times territory in a contested area on the border between South Fontana and Headhunters. In the end, Orleano Mendez and David Avina were found guilty of one count of first degree murder and both were each sentenced to a total of 50 years to life.